Final Freddy's 3's Night 1 is arguably the easiest night in all of Final Freddy's, since Springtrap isn't here. Well, since Springtrap didn't even want to greet me on Night 1, it's time to be super petty and avoid him altogether. That's right, in this video, I'm going to be beating Final Freddy's 3 without Springtrap, the one character who can kill us. But exactly how is this challenge going to work? I'm sure looking at the title you're a bit confused, so let me explain. I have to beat the game without ever physically looking at Springtrap at all. No seeing him on the cameras, no seeing him poke his head out from around the corner, no seeing him run across my screen, and obviously, no jump scares. If I see him at all, I have to restart the night, even if I beat it. Springtrap is not allowed to appear on my screen at all for any gameplay. So is a game all about Springtrap actually possible without Springtrap? Well, let's find out. So, as I said before, Night 1 is the easiest Final Freddy's night of all time, since there is literally nothing here. So while I wait for Night 2 to start, let's quickly go over this game and how it works. In Final Freddy's 3, you play as a security guard like the other games, but unlike the previous games, you're on a horror attraction rather than a pizzeria. Once again, you have to survive from 12am to 6am for 5 nights. And unlike the previous games, you only have one animatronic that is able to kill you, although he isn't here on this night. So because of that, let's just skip to the next night. So here we are on night 2, and now Springtrap is here, but at the same time he isn't because we aren't allowed to see him. So how does Springtrap actually work? Springtrap works on movement opportunities like every other game, but his work a little bit differently. Basically, Springtrap moves whenever his movement timer hits a certain point rather than getting a chance to move on every couple of seconds. Springtrap can also move anywhere in the building, moving forwards and backwards, although he is more likely to move forward. However, we can control which camera he goes into with the audio lure, using it on a camera next to the camera that he is currently in. However, how are we able to tell which camera he is in? Oh, that's easy, we look for him on the camera. Oh, that's right, we aren't allowed to look at him. So how on earth are we able to tell what camera he is in without actually looking at him? Well, there's one thing about this game that I haven't talked about, and that's the errors. There are three types of errors you can get in this game. Audio errors, camera errors, and ventilation errors. For now, let's focus on the camera errors. While using the cameras, after a certain amount of time, you will get a camera error, which blacks out the screen and makes anything in the camera completely invisible to the player, meaning that we can look at any camera that Springtrap is actually in without actually seeing him if we have a camera error. But if you can't see him, how do you know what camera he is in? Well, there's a few ways we can tell, but one way you can kind of tell is by watching the static. Whenever the static makes this noise, that means that either Springtrap has moved to that camera or has moved to the camera next to the one you're looking at, meaning that we can use the audio lure to figure out what camera he is on. If the camera makes the sound again, it means he is now on the camera we are looking at, meaning we can now track him. Also, cameras with Springtrap on it have less static than those without. There are other ways we can track Springtrap, but on this night, Springtrap didn't really move around at all that much, and as a result, we easily got the dub. So night 3 isn't really that much different from night 2, but I figured that now would be a good enough time to start talking about the Phantoms. While the next couple of nights will introduce more of these guys, I can quickly explain what the Phantoms actually do. There are 6 Phantoms which appear in random locations and if triggered, cause a ventilation error, which when activated, causes Springtrap to move twice as fast and cause other Phantoms to appear more often. So the best thing you can do with the Phantoms is to just avoid them altogether, and I'll explain the three main Phantoms you have to deal with on Nights 2 and 3 and how to avoid them. Phantom Mangle is the least threatening, as they appear on Cam 4 and if we look at them too long, causes an audio error, rather than a ventilation error, which can be very bad, but overall is not as bad as a ventilation error. Plus, they only appear on Cam 4, so if we never look at that camera, we never have to deal with them. Phantom Balloon Boy is probably the most annoying camera character, as he can appear on any camera and jump scare you if you look at him too long, resulting in a ventilation error. To avoid him, just look at any other camera or exit cams. It's also good that we can see him even with a camera error. Phantom Freddy is probably the biggest issue in this whole challenge, and there's a couple of reasons for that, but I'll explain the main issue the next night. But for now, all you need to know is that if you're not either in the cameras or on the maintenance panel for more than two seconds when he's across your window, he will duck down and jump scare you, resulting in a ventilation error. Also, speaking of ventilation, one of the biggest issues with Springtrap is actually the vents. Keeping track of where Springtrap is, is so important, because if he enters a vent, there's no way to tell what vent he is in, 
and some events allow him to instantly kill you, so keeping track of him is essential. But anyways, Night 3 was pretty easy, so let's move on to Night 4. <laughs> night 4 is where I really had to actually try. Springtrap moves really fast on this night and onwards, and now every Phantom is here. All three of these Phantoms make the game a lot more annoying, starting with Phantom Puppet. Phantom Puppet lives on Cam 8, and if we look at him for too long, we get a 17 second animation where we can't check the camps or fix any errors, meaning that for the 17 seconds that the Phantom Puppet's jump scaring us, so to speak, Springtrap can do whatever he wants, which normally means we are dead because of how fast he moves. So to avoid Phantom Puppet altogether, we have to avoid Cam 8 at all costs, since we can never see them on that camera. Phantom Chica is similar in that they appear on Cam 7 and we can't see them. They will jump scare us the next time we look at the maintenance panel if we look at them for too long. Now, although Phantom Freddy is a massive pain in this challenge, Phantom Foxy is definitely up there, as he chills up next to the maintenance panel, and if we move over to him, he jump scares us. Now, the way that we deal with him is to look back at the camera until he leaves, but not only is it easy to forget he is there or not even notice him, but sometimes you're so desperate for an error to be fixed, having to wait around for Phantom Foxy to piss off is a massive pain. But if Phantom Foxy is such a pain, how is Phantom Freddy worse? Well, to answer that, let's first look at the main strat that I actually started to use from this night onwards. Tracking Springtrap is more essential in this night than ever before, as we established. But because of how fast he moves, it's super hard to figure out where he is. However, there's three main sound cues that can help us identify where Springtrap is. Obviously, the vent sound effects means that he's in a vent. You can hear his footsteps whenever he moves, which is super important. But the main sound that we want to be listening to, especially at the start of the night, is this. Hearing the sound start to play means that Springtrap is in Cam 5. And as such, we can move him to either Cam 8 or Cam 6. Obviously, Cam 8 is a no-no because of the puppet, so Cam 6 is the best choice. Actually, Cam 6 is an amazing cam to keep him on, since he only has one vent he can enter, and there's no way he can move 5 cams without us noticing unless we get a ventilation error. So, the strat became to keep Springtrap in Cam 6, and every time we heard the noise that plays when he moves to Cam 5, just lure him back. This strat was super easy, since that combined of Springtrap's footsteps means we pretty much know exactly where Springtrap is at all times, meaning we have effectively beaten the night. However, as established, Phantom Freddy can mess this pattern up, and that's because Phantom Freddy makes the exact same noise when he appears that Springtrap does when he goes into Camp 5, meaning that if we are not paying attention, Phantom Freddy can bait us into thinking that Springtrap has moved when he hasn't. And because of how fast Springtrap can move, not immediately catching when he moves can result in completely losing him, which normally means that we die. So realizing when Phantom Freddy appears is essential, and that's why the footstep sound is just as important, so we can know for absolute certainty that Springtrap has moved. But anyways, that's pretty much the strat for this challenge, and after a couple of attempts, Night 4 is done. <laughs> night 5 is the first true test to see if we have mastered all the mechanics. This night pretty much used everything I talked about from Night 4, and I used the same strategy. It was just that Springtrap was a lot harder to deal with, since he more often than not, would sprint to the other side of the building, enter the Cam 10 vent, and come straight into your office. So keeping him locked in Cam 6 is essential. In fact, unlike Night 4 when I only lured him back when he went into Cam 5, this night I would lure him back regardless to prevent him from making any moves like that. Phantom Foxy was also way more annoying than any other character as he seriously prevented me from fixing the ventilation or the lure which normally meant Springtrap was loose, and remember, I can't look at Cam 7, 8, or 4, so effectively the main camera is standing in the way of Springtrap's main positions, which made some attempts really frustrating. However, despite all of that, we pushed through, and after many, many attempts, we got the dub. So there we go. However, there's one more thing that I wanted to do, and I think you know where this is going. Nightmare Night is the hardest night in Final Fantasy Freddy's 3, and I'll be honest, it wasn't that bad. There's one main reason for this. On the previous nights, I would get a ventilation error after a certain amount of time. However, on Nightmare, this doesn't happen at all, so that's a win. However, obviously the bigger issue is Springtrap, who moves so fast that keeping him locked down in Camp 6 is literally a necessity, and yet almost an impossible feat. 
The best way I found to keep him locked down was to immediately go reboot audio every time we use it. However, if Phantom Foxy showed up or we got a ventilation error in any other way, prioritizing an audio lure before attempting to fix ventilation is necessary. This night was hard and fully tested my skills with this game. Most runs actually ended because Springtrap ended up in the window in front of me since if he entered a vent, he would more than likely be able to go through before I had any time to close it and the campfire vent seemed to be his favourite. But regardless, as hard as this night was, as I said before, it wasn't really that bad and I wasn't going to give up that easy anyway. So we just pushed forward and after quite a few tries, we did eventually get the dub. So there we are, it is possible to beat Final Fantasy Freddy's 3 without ever seeing Springtrap at all. Well, unless you count this. <laughs> this was easily the most unique and cool challenge to take on, and I would love to take on more challenges like this in the future. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe as I will be doing a Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 challenge next, and already have the challenge chosen, so stay tuned. Also, thank you all for 10,000 subscribers, absolutely insane. If you have any other challenge ideas you want me to do, let me know in the comments below. I definitely want to do a few fan game challenges as well, so stay tuned for those. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.